Hey guys, in this video you're going to learn about tension problems where two objects are connected to each other and therefore one object holds another. Uh, the easiest kind, and that's where we'll start just so you get the hang of it, is uh, the Atwood machine, as this is called. Um, they don't all look like this. In fact, as you can see in front of you, uh, Atwood force, Atwood machine. Um, for the Atwood machine, usually actually it's two pulleys, as you can see right here. This is an Atwood machine. You can't see the other weight because it's out of the frame of the picture, but there it is. If you have two weights connected to each other by a string strung over a pulley, obviously the heavier side falls. There it went. And then, and then it inexplicably sprang back up, and then, that, oh, it was the... Uh, the little weight fell off. And so, you know, if there's equal weights on either side, they don't tend to go anywhere. All right, but if I put any amount of excess weight on one side or the other, then we get an acceleration. And also, perhaps, obviously, if uh, you apply more weight to one side, like even more, then the rate of acceleration will be even greater. So the way that you analyze these is using forces. Or at least that's, that's the easiest way. All right, so let me get this thing out of the way. Um, so, to begin with, you must draw your force diagram. Okay, As we've discussed, if you don't draw a force diagram, you kind of deserve to get the question wrong. Uh, there we go. All right. So, on this one, we have its weight pulling down and tension pulling upwards. All right, we have the same forces on this one, except, of course, its weight is much greater. And you have to make sure that you call it M2G to distinguish it from M1G. MG wouldn't be fully descriptive. They both have a weight that acts on them, but it's a different weight. And so, therefore, we have to acknowledge that in some way. All right, sometimes we use little m, sometimes we use big, big m, but whatever it may be, you have to distinguish between them, such as m1g and m2g. The two tensions, though, we're always going to act as though those are identical until such time as we have learned about rotation, and you can deal with the fact that maybe actually the tensions are slightly different. Okay, But for right now, it's an ideal pulley, which means the tension on either side is the same, because it's frictionless and massless. Okay, whatever. All right, next thing is we need to write equations for the sum of the forces. All right, there's no horizontal forces to speak of acting here on either of the masses, but it's super important that you write one equation for each mass. That's for each one. You can't really write one equation for the whole thing, or at least you can, but it's not really a great way to solve the problem because you can't easily get at what the tension is if you ever wanted to know it. All right, so you'll work with one mass at a time. All right, let's go with the first one first because it's number one. So the sum of the vertical forces on mass one would be, all right, well, it's got tension and it's got its own weight. And there's always going to be a question on these connected object problems of, which force goes first? And the answer is it's always the larger force goes first. So if it's moving in some direction, or accelerating rather, in that direction, then that must mean that that force must be the greater one. So for the first object, it's accelerating upwards, therefore the tension is greater than the weight. So we will say tension minus m1g equals m1a. All right, now, why M1A, Mr. Eric? Well, because it's accelerating, and so usually for these questions, it's going to say, what is the acceleration? All right, so M1A, there we are. Notice I'm being careful to put the ones. I'm not just saying M, because this is all related to object number one. Now we'll do the same thing with object number two. Now, for this one, uh, a rookie mistake would be writing the two forces in the exact same order. If you put T minus M2G equals M2A, uh, you've got everything in there, but in the wrong order. 
the weight of this one is larger than the tension because it accelerates downwards. So therefore, I must put it in the opposite order. Now, you know that you've done the problem right if this next algebraic step works. And that is, when you add the two equations together, the tensions eliminate. All right, this is called literally elimination, right? You learned about it in math class. If I add the two equations together, the tensions eliminate because in one equation, tension was a positive quantity. In the other, it was a negative quantity, and it's the same tension. So therefore, they will eliminate. All right, at this point, if it's a symbolic problem, then I... Yeah, I have a little more to do. If it's a numbers problem, I can plug in numbers and go from there. Um, if I wanted to solve for the acceleration, we would do the whole factor it out thing. And divide both sides by m1 plus m2. And so the final answer would be m2g minus m1g over m1 plus m2 equals acceleration. All right. So that's how any problem where both sides are hanging is going to go. Uh, on the other hand, if it's like this one, uh, things will go a little bit differently. All right. So now I'm going to uh, pack these equations here. And now we're going to put them with this problem. That's just so I don't have to rewrite it. All right, now, for this one, uh, I'm using big M and little m just to, you know, change up the notation a little bit. Um, and, uh, actually, no, I do have to erase everything. Um, we've got the same assortment of forces, more or less, right? We've got mg, tension, tension. All right, this one has big mg. That's got normal force acting upwards on it. And it might even have friction. In some questions, there will be friction. All right, so I'll go ahead and put it in there. And we'll explore all those possibilities, like what if there is friction, what if there's not. All right, for the little mass, um, assuming that it is, you know, uh, accelerating downwards, then our equation would look like mg minus t. In that order, because the weight must be greater than the tension if it's accelerating downwards, equals ma. Or, let's give the other possibility, maybe it equals zero. Remember, if they don't ask you for the acceleration or give you the acceleration, it's probably actually an equilibrium situation, such as if they say, what's the minimum coefficient of friction required to hold the system at equilibrium? All right, put a zero in there. All right, for the other one, uh, I actually need two equations for that one, potentially. I need a horizontal forces, and I need a vertical forces. And the reason I'm going to need two, potentially, is in the event that there is friction, you have to be able to figure out what the normal force is because of friction being fun. All right, so if that's what it looks like, then uh, we would have T minus friction equals, again, either MA or zero. All right, these are both going to be MA, or they're both going to be zero. All right, for the uh, Y direction on that one, since it's on a flat surface, we don't have to worry about components for gravity and it's, vertically speaking, in equilibrium. So definitely a zero for that one. All right, if it's frictionless, then you can go ahead and cross off this friction term, and you don't even need that one. And then you could imagine doing the same thing that we did moments ago with the Atwood machine. If you add those two equations together, lo and behold, the tensions will cancel out, and hopefully none of you noticed that. I put a little m there. Oh, okay, so it's supposed to be a big m because, again, remember, they're different masses.
presumably. Okay, so fine. If that's what goes on, then fine. Tension minus tension, that will cancel out. So you can add the equations together, and it would just be mg equals, this is, imagine adding these together, ma plus big ma. All right, now, if there is friction, then it would look like that. And then you would have to figure out the friction force based on the normal force. All right, and again, remember there's the possibility that it could, it could be equilibrium, and so this whole side would just be zero. Either way, again, if you did it right, the tensions should cancel out. All right. Uh, I'm presenting a very broad view here, not any specifics, all right? So the, the specifics of the problem are obviously going to vary, like is there friction, are they in equilibrium, what's going on exactly, but this is the broad overview of how all of these problems more or less are going to go. All right, now, the third possibility is it's on an inclined plane. So this one is the most complicated and, um, and, and, and therefore the most interesting, I think. Um, the little hanging weight over here is, you know, still as simple as ever for the force diagram. This one, three out of four forces are easy. You know gravity is going to be straight down. You know that tension is going to pull it up the incline, all right? And you know that the, uh, that the normal force is, like, I forget which ones I mentioned. Okay, the tricky one is friction. Friction might be up the incline, or it might be down the incline. It actually entirely depends on whether like this little weight is heavy enough to pull this one up the incline. Um, okay, and, and so, or, or, or if it's the other way around, and this one is so heavy that it's going to slide down and pull that one upwards. So you have to pay a little bit of attention to what they are saying is happening. All right, we're just going to finish this. All right, so the direction of friction could go either way, okay? So friction might be down if they say the system is sliding this way, or if they say, what's the maximum weight that you could hang here before it starts to slide? All right, alternatively, friction could be up the incline if they say, this thing is sliding down, calculate the acceleration, or what's the minimum weight you could hang here that will hold the system at equilibrium, or maybe even what's the maximum weight that you could put here that would hold the system at equilibrium. All right, so that's the most complicated scenario. Also, you're going to have to do stuff with components of gravity, mg sine theta and mg cosine theta. You only have to tilt one set of axes. This one can be on regular axes, this one can be on tilted axes, and everything's okay. All right, that's all I've got time for. So I hope that helps you navigate through those homework problems, uh, and I'll see you guys on Tuesday.